another okay, 10 yeah. images in the those in color and I do the agenda one more than you. By the time I figured that out, it was too late for a longer. So I don't know where we could have gone. I'm not the more worried about this. Or about the. And there was no internet. The, well, there was internet, but it was satellite oh. internet. And so, I mean, yeah. let anybody tell you that satellite internet is just as good as cable or yeah. you know, because they think I've got in the past. Yeah, I'm just hoping it's not going to be not on the course. Sarah's going to move into a I could not. I couldn't see the number of emails. That's what it's pretty easy. Uploading pictures, apparently. Downloading anything. I miss them. So, I am a D1 just set of D5. Two classes behind it. You want to ask you? Nothing for the day because mm -hmm. I'm mean, actually like, okay, I couldn't find the VTA and I guess. I was like, my best. And it was awesome. Yeah. And look at this pretty sketch. Have you? This is my best. I I wanted to Yeah, the good 
and the fire tree and the and the tree and the tree and the tree and the something at home to try. This weekend I totally forgot. Oh yeah. Yeah. I was really, really busy and I didn't think of it. I should have though, because I was busy. It's your medicine. Yeah, it would have been nice. Your medicine. Sorry, I'm practicing my class. Huh? Sorry. for each sit. Well um the longest I've done it was for like an hour, but that was because um, it was helping me sit still while I was at acupuncture. Oh. So I came to like 900 breaths. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Oh, good. And, and it really helped. <laughs> but I, my mind wandered really fast. So, cool. yeah. but, so it might, that might not be completely accurate. But yeah, I've been practicing mindfulness and meditation. So when you walk to the trail, you walk mindfully because it's dangerous. <laughs> Oh yeah, uh, I was definitely mindful of each breath I took because it was a struggle. So. Oh yeah. Wow, it's too high, too yeah, stiff. Yeah, it's too high, and, and it was and the, the altitude was too high, and the, the trail was way too steep. Oh really? So. You have any garden, or you walk by yourself with your husband? I had well, I was with my husband, so but it was kind of as I said, he's he's disabled, so it was. Is it safe or it is safe trail? It was supposed to be a, a safe trail, but they lied. <laughs> so, I would hate to see somebody try to push somebody in a wheelchair up that trail. I mean, it was literally, it felt like a 45 degree. Really? Wow. You know, incline. It's really steep. Um, so. you walk around the top and go down what it is? No, it's it's straight. Really? Up. Yeah, it's not. It wasn't the zigzag or anything. So. Really? And then you get up to the top and you're, they have these, they have them. A lookout tower that you then again climbed, and it's supposed to be a gorgeous view. But the day we it, it was raining, so we got to see a very nice uh, what the inside of a cloud looks like. Mm -hmm. So, can smell the cloud. Yeah, it, it did. It smelled absolutely wonderful. That, mm -hmm. I mean, it was the freshest air I've smelled in probably forever. So. But when you went out, is this really dangerous? That's just... when it convinced me that I wasn't I wasn't over exaggerating how I felt because it I could uh, going up it's hard to tell what the incline was but going down and, and realizing you know even with the walking shoes I had on that I was starting to slip but that's when I realized it was especially when this was ran into yeah you, right? so you try to do um just uh, two minutes a day that's fine you trying to last night I did it for a little bit um I don't really know how long it was. I just it was really kind of stressed out, so I just tried to take a minute and instead of focusing on, on the other things, you know, just try to focus on the breathing. So. How are you? I've been practicing at least one or two minutes a day, and then um, I've been trying a lot harder to use the things we learned from emotional regulation. Uh, I've been trying to apply those and I did mindful walking. Yeah, plenty of ways so you know 
uh, the four approaches, right? So that's, that's the last one. Uh, influence the view beside you <coughs> to uh, pick and choose the techniques that you like um, to write about leadership skill. Have you tried it? Uh, yeah, I think the idea of consistent way, but I don't have a book test. It's a different book test. It's helpful when you, before you take it, the test, you close your eye well, for a minute. That's mm -hmm. all. Um, I didn't meditate, unfortunately, but I did um, pay more attention to how I personally to how I ate this, so that could have blown up. Oh, okay. <laughs> I tried. You have good food, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, you try it? Yeah. I, um, I tried like this week because uh, it's got a test coming up and I lost work, so I tried to do like five minutes every day and see how much work. So uh, for the rare meditators like us, sometimes um, we need to make a judgment. But for me, um, afternoon is better. Late afternoon, five six o'clock, we have more energy. In morning, sometimes we may feel uh, this um, not this but feel sleepy. Okay, we anyway, let us start for a few minutes, please. Okay, start with one minute. Mm. So again, please relax yourself. Count your breath naturally. Do one minute first. No. One minute is easy, right? Okay, we do two.
Did you miss anything? That's okay. Okay, so let's uh, start. Start with um, today we talk about personality with developers. Somehow it's pretty important, right? Mm. As much we understand our mind, this kind of uh, development is so important because if we know how to develop ourselves, we will know how to handle our life, to handle other people's life, to help other people, to handle other things. If we don't know how to handle our life in high school, to help other people. Okay, so the first one describes how mindfulness affects self awareness. It's easy, right? So who does this one? Go one. Yeah? Oh, yeah. I forgot that it is. So um, it's pretty obvious, right? So how how much this affect your self awareness? Again, we go back to the definition of mindfulness. Mindfulness means ability to recall. Self-awareness being self-consciousness at all times. What means self-consciousness at all times? So this is one that I could uh, practice. This is so popular in Buddhist tradition. It's so important. It's been an ability to recall, to remember what to do all the times. So basically, in this we have what we call um, the four horses. Okay, standing, walking, sitting, and lying down. That means in all activities, you have to be mindful. Let's uh, talk about the, um, the disadvantages and the problems of um, sitting without mindfulness. I remember when I was young, we in the school we we played with each other. So one of our friends, when they we know that they get into to the sit, we sit out. <laughs> you, you know, right? You play when we young, right? <laughs> but they sit out, they fall down. <laughs> we laugh, right? <laughs> but that's why that's that's absent of sitting mindfully, right? And of course, sometimes we sit. Mm, we we may not recognize what we are sitting, right? And um, when we walk, right, sometimes, right, when you walk to the trail, especially only when we deal with, when we encounter some kind of difficulties or dangerous situations, we will be mindful, right? Otherwise, like from, from the parking lot to the, to the class, we can walk sometimes without notice, take notice as we're walking, is that right? Most of the time. What happens? Some, um, sometimes we stumble uh, on the rock, right? On the block that we may not pay attention to the little of our feet, right? On the ground. So, um, and sitting, even sometimes we don't know what we're standing for, right? Walking, stand down, and it delayed to walking, starting. We know, right? Um, 
especially when you work uh, on your paper, right? When you write in, but your mind still run around, you might not focus, you might not to gather information uh, that you're supposed to write about. Right? And when you're talking, like, what, what, you sometimes, right? Sometimes we talk, but we don't know what we're talking about. Is that right? And sometimes we say something meaningless or something that may affect our friends and other people. That's later we regret. Sorry, I don't mean that. <laughs> right. And of course, um, we devalue ourselves. We devalue our dignity. Um, and what happens without thinking? If we're not mindful. Yeah, and everything similar and when we talk we could not organize our thought, especially when you in front of them, people, right? Hundreds of people, if you don't could not recognize your thought could if you could not recognize, uh, uh, organize your thinking, right? You talk here and there and people may not understand what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So you have to be mindful in every action. That's that's called mindfulness mindfulness and so they work together hand in hand. To you go to the member and awareness to recognize what you do all the time. Uh, of course, it's blessed for us to have what called ICT to member. You don't need to sit in meditation, but like you say, cooking. That's a form of mindfulness, right? Uh, or sweeping the floor, right? It's a form of mindfulness. Uh, of course, it just depend if you have more times. If you stay later, if you they they dedicate your my, your life for meditation, you need to sit more. It's, sitting is one of the the stable or position that we can pursue. Um, but we but doesn't mean that we could not be mindful with any other activities. Like today, you have interview, right? To be mindful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You've been mindful with whichever thing they say, they ask you, right? Yeah, I also try to be, keep from wondering about other things. And you anticipate any questions? Yeah. Okay. You prepare for the question, right? Yes. And remember, don't expect. Mm -hmm. Don't expect too much. Don't expect too much? Mm -hmm. Out of myself? And from them too. Okay. Remember? Remember that? Right. What happened if you, if you have too much expectation? When you walk into the room to have that interview, reduce the interview for the whole week, what do you think? What do you feel? I mean, if you have, yeah, I mean, if you have a lot of expectation, uh, I guess you're more likely to get down on yourself if it doesn't fulfill your expectation. Um, and I guess personally, I would probably be more likely to kind of. You know, get a little depressed, like, oh man, I didn't go how I wanted yeah. to go. Uh -huh. so, uh, like we did this before, the more we put the expectation, if we, this, if we get that, we, we all be excited, right? If we could not get, we be depressed. Right? So this is learning experience. Get, try our best and try. get respond to any question that they ask in the mindful way. Okay, anyway, so that is a mindfulness and self awareness. It did not need certain answers. It's so helpful. Mm. Okay, so that's the next one. That's the first one. The next one is Jessica, number two. Um, so mine is about um, how mindfulness can help with self knowledge. Yes, what's mean self knowledge? Yeah. Um, I kind of thought it was sort of taking it one step further than self-awareness. Um, mm -hmm. It's sort of your own understanding of your behaviors, feelings, um, patterns of thinking, and sort of um, you're also able to accurately perceive how others view you. Um, sort of like the extent to which you know yourself in terms of what you're, how you're going to respond in certain situations, things like that. Um, mm -hmm. And from what I read, there's several like blind spots that can Block your path to getting accurate and like effective self knowledge, and um, one of those has to deal with um, what's referred to, from what I read, as informational barrier, which is just referring to like the quality and um, quantity of information that is.
is out there that we can actually use. So it seems like maybe we can't perceive our nonverbal behavior. Maybe we're doing stuff that we're not aware of that other people can see that we don't necessarily see. Um, and the other one, the one that I thought was really interesting is um, a motivational barrier yes. is what it was called. And um, it's kind of like how we, I mean, it's natural to sort of spend your life like cultivating yourself and your personal identity. And um, I think you try really hard to preserve that idea at, at all costs sometimes. So if something um, comes along to contradict that, or um, you know, someone says something that doesn't fit with your idea of yourself, then um, from what I read and from what I understand, you sort of don't necessarily believe it, you sort of back away from it because you've got such an ingrained sense of um, who you are. Um, so how can mindfulness help with these things? I mean, it's kind of like what we already said, um, just to pay more, pay really close attention to your physical self so that maybe you know how you're fidgeting. Like, I talk with my hands constantly. I know that I do, and I, I still can't stop it for some reason. <laughs> Um, and then the other one uh, is to not evaluate or not judge how someone may perceive you if that goes against your own perception. And so, so the two areas, the first one is information, right? Information areas, right? The second one is motivation, or motivation mm -hmm. So why information, you know, barrier, uh, information barriers uh, block your uh, cell knowledge? Why? Can you elaborate? Um, I think because maybe we get misinformation or it's not quite, um, it's kind of ambiguous, maybe. Can you give an example? Um, let's say maybe, um, well, something I can remember is most feedback we receive is usually positive about our personality. So if you hear that over and over and over again, that type of information is not, I mean, you don't necessarily say something or hear something negative about your personality, so maybe you don't take that into account. Okay. I don't know. Okay. How about motivation barriers? Um, I mean, it's for me. I think it's sort of when um, something contradicts how you feel about yourself and your ego, or your identity. Maybe. I'm not sure. Um, yeah. In uh, this article, thank you. Thanks for this. Um, there's two components. Um, So, for info, informational barriers, that's caused by lack of information or lack of quality of information. Um, so, like, uh, we cannot know this, the, in, the internal state of mind of other people. That's one thing. We can access other people internal state and uh, so we don't know we don't have any knowledge about their state of mind compared to others. Um, and also we don't uh, we are all, we are not always aware of nonverbal clue that sometimes that we need to order um, since we cannot see ourselves from the third person. I say um, mm, uh, Sometimes we could not recognize our voice 
Sometimes, when, let's say, when we're angry, we raise our voice, we could not recognize ourselves, right? When we're shy, we somehow we talk to, to stop and so forth. We could not recognize us as that of information. So, basically, it's difficult to access the objective information about ourselves. Um, we often lack unbiased evidence of our personality, which we sometimes, which we you know what's me? It's kind of hard to be unbiased about yourself. You've got preconceived notions yeah, yeah, about good. how you want to be and, mm -hmm. and how you think everybody else sees you. So. Yeah. Sometimes we say we're proud of ourselves, right? Uh, um, mm -hmm. We have high head, <laughs> high head, and so forth, right? Uh, that's, so that's what was talked about the informational barriers. And motivation there again is similar but it's, it's, it's different. Mm. Mm. Uh, occur when information personality is available to someone else, but the, but that person unconsciously detects that. Um, so sometimes we idealize ourselves. Um, like um to mm, to the motivation to either self-enhance, we idealize our self-image. We put ourselves in high position, in high esteem, and self-modify. We preserve with our current self-image. That, um, yeah, of course, it's this common sense. Right? When you go to view, you present yourself, right? In, in a nice way, right? in a pleasant way, so that the individual can accept you. So that, that's our motivation barrier, but we could not recognize our own knowledge easily because of that kind of barrier, that type of appearance. Uh, so to be my so so we understand informational barriers and motivation barriers basically this block our self knowledge of ourselves. We could not see who we are. We could not recognize who we are, uh, practically. So that's why in mindfulness, to be mindful means to pay attention to one present experience without evaluating or elaborating on it. Just recognize we're here without any evaluation or elaboration. Um, yesterday, this one lady, she went to my temple in Louisville. And she told me that right now she feels empty. In doing everything, that means she doesn't have the urge, doesn't have the interest in doing things because she feels empty there. We have, have you had that kind of feeling before? Right? We have that kind of feeling, right? That, that's a feeling that I think one who may have the uh, depression problems, right? So, and because of that, she said that she like or she want to disconnect herself from other people. And, and she said that even she go to the church or go to the public place to associate with people, yes, she has no time, but still she feels empty there. Maybe in most of the circumstances. So this is um, she, she doesn't recognize her self knowledge there. And of course, it's the next one we talk about the mindfulness with the personality to uh, uh, identity too. So, how could we deal with that? How could we help her? What do you think? If you were her counselor, how could you help her to encourage her to get back with her? First, I'd have to know how she's living her life currently. I mean, she can tell me how she feels, but I don't know how she's actually living. So if I knew that, then maybe I'd give her like some sort of activity to do or something. Yeah. Maybe improve that. But of course, when you hear her expression about that, that type of emptiness is different from Buddhist emptiness, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's kind of disconnection. 
lot of people, she tried to isolate herself because she doesn't have any motivation to socialize with other people because she feels that she's meaningless. So get um, listening to her expression. So how, could you give her some kind of advice? She needs to find something that's meaningful. Okay, but she could not now. Wherever she goes, she says she goes to the church, go to the pub place, and so forth. She feels empty. What do you think? I personally you know, kind of experienced that before, and I think the reason it's kind of like that would be because I expect too much out of things. Um, like I'm expecting this, maybe when I go to hang out with friends, I'm expecting this great experience, and it doesn't live up to what I'm expecting, and it kind of leads me to be a little down about that. And you know, it's like, well, what, you know, what am I, what am I getting out of life? That was, you know, what's, what's next to try to fulfill this expectation I have. Yeah. yeah. That's why you mentioned that. Don't expect yeah. too much from your viewers. <laughs> uh, so that you could live on uh, and recognize yourself. So, how about others? What's your advice to her? <laughs> no? I would teach her how to be mindful. Yeah. I would teach her. Yeah. Because a lot of people aren't aware that they're thinking about the past and the future. All the That's the point. Not living. Compare, living. right? Yeah. They compare the good time in the past. Now, they, they couldn't get, get have good times. That's why they feel empty, right? Mm -hmm. They feel disconnection, right? Yes. I feel like mindfulness is something people are open to only if they're ready to change. So there, I mean, I've experienced this talking with other people about it, and um, a lot of people really like the idea. But we were talking <laughs> before class, like sometimes we talk to somebody, some people who are close to us about mindfulness, and to them it's like, in order to practice the things that we talk about in class, in order to do that, would require like complete paradigm shifts and how they yeah. think about the world. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so, how do you do that? Like, say that woman feels empty, and she has always, and she's not, she doesn't like the idea of, she doesn't like the solution you're presenting. You know, what do you do with people coming to you? Sometimes, I don't know whether I told you about this analogy. In Asian uh, tradition, we had the, uh, the says that um, the horse go back to the same path. You understand that? We tend to go back to the same path. We feel more comfortable with the path that we've we done before. So unless we want to take the challenges, most of the time, we like to go to the same path. That's why, yes, that's why we go to school, to change our views of life. Is that right? Whether we study math, uh, physics, or chemistry, we change our life about some type of chemicals, right? We, so, um, otherwise, we just uh, think, oh, just water. We can drink water. And when um, we, we don't go to school, we don't know when we boil um, the water to the degree that is boring, this is, is one of the degree and so forth. So anyway, so it's, yeah, we need to shift our paradigm in order to change. That's why it's hard. It's hard for people to change. Even they know, right? Even may, they may get good information, they know, but it's not easy until they have some kind of motivation. Is that right? Okay, anyway, yeah. So again, yes, this mindfulness here. Yeah, absorb at home. Work. Just connect with your breath first. That make that first, that make that initial connection with yourself, the breath. That's your own breath. As much as you make connection with your breath, you make connection with your body. You make connection with your mind. And when you feel that kind of connection within yourself, when you are socialize with other people, you feel that connection too. You feel connection with the, the, the table, the flowers on the, on the table, and so forth. 
you won't feel any discrimination anymore. You won't feel empty anymore. You feel more uh, interest in working with other people. So that's that first with the prayer. Okay, let's just move on. So the next one, the third three. Um, we have uh, yeah personal identity. Yes. Um, so personal identity. Some of the stuff I read is kind of a combination of. It's kind of answering the question, who am I? What am I? Yeah. What do I want out of life? Um, but more. It incorporates like our self-image our thoughts, our self-knowledge, our values, and many other traits to kind of all come together and form what we see as our identity or who we see ourselves as. And I think that my opinion is that um, mindfulness can really help in forming or changing your personal identity. Because we uh, tend to have our identities wrapped up in our um, emotions, like um, if we are focused on our emotions of the past or the future, or mm -hmm. we, we value too much how we feel, or instead of having the observed self and noticing our feelings, we tend to attach to those feelings mm -hmm. and make them part of our identity. And then that's why we have so much suffering, because we can't, we're building our identity on things that are temporal, they're shifting. So um, we need to be, build our identity on more stable things, more like present truths and mindfulness can help you with that. Um, let us um, go back to the, uh, to make the list of um, our personal identity. By the way, my, she's my student, my team boy. She, she's a freshman at UVL. She just finished up the class. Okay. <laughs> okay, so let's say uh, let's put the list of personal identity. Um, so what do you have here? Can you give me the list? Values. Okay, values, yes. Self-awareness. Uh, something something oh. more concrete. Oh, like self-knowledge? No, something more concrete. More concrete. Your laptop. Your laptop. Your PC. That's your. Yes, you like your laptop with your cell phone? Mm -hmm. And I mean that in general. We relate. This is my laptop. We relate our things to like yeah. we think yeah. this, this sweater yeah, reveals who I am. That's mine, right? Yeah. That's mine. Don't touch my computer and so on. Okay. <laughs> okay. You see that? okay. And my email. Is that right? Okay. My personal ID, right? My ID, 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 but the one I want to discuss is, uh, let's say, our PC or our laptop, desktop, travel license. If we recognize them, right, do they speak about our personality? They do. Yeah, they are travel license. It has our picture, our signature, right? About our laptop. Your background. Yeah. Your, mm -hmm. What you have on it. About our, our laptop. All information we, we download and we gather is for ourselves. That's our identity, right? But the point I want to say is that it's a memory or last point. Just memory. That's a point. That's just a mention. That's a point we can't handle. That's kind of of um, person, personal identity. And what happens if we don't recognize ourselves? If we act, one way is, is too 
two extreme way, right? One is uh, attach a personal identity, right? Not the um, poise to disassociate themselves. That's the person who lost their um, appetite in eating or they have the depression, right? So let's talk about if we attach too much to our identity, what happens? This is, this is my driver's license. When you lose it, you've lost the piece of yourself. Yeah, yeah. and you start to recover. And what happened? Okay, let's say your laptop or you, uh, you save all information for your classes, right? Your, your test, exam, and so forth. What happened if you somehow accidentally you pull water or accidentally you drop, you drop the uh, laptop yeah, down? You done, you're done with your laptop. It's hot. It's hot. Oh, how do you feel? How do you feel? How do you feel? Yeah. Like if we pour the water on there, then. How do you feel? <laughs> She'd ask me to pay for it. Okay. But sometimes, <laughs> if you feel like you lost everything, some, yeah. You needed, right? I mean, sometimes, if even she pay, people, even she can pay for the cost of the laptop. It doesn't bring back what's in it. The yeah. Things to you, right? Mm -hmm. And you're attached to that. <laughs> Like people say, oh, my phone is my life. If I lost my phone, I'd be lost. Yeah. I left my phone home today. I'm like, oops, all my notes for class are in there. Oh, yeah. Like you see, when you went to the mountain, right? There's no, no internet, right? We get oh, use yeah. of, of email people every day, right? Uh, that's, we identify ourselves with other people by com uh, communication with them. They do that kind of communication by sending email, by making phone call, and so forth. But one day, we don't have internet. And it's, uh, and actually my, some of my students, um, in the summer time, I took them to my monastery and they don't have internet, so they have that experience. But at home, every, every hour, hours, right, they check emails or text and so forth. Anyway, so if we attach too much of type of anonymity, what happens then? When we lose them, we stress out. Mm -hmm. You know, this is funny. Um, the week before, that last weekend, not 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 yesterday, the, the last Sunday, I went to St. Louis to do this wedding ceremony for a new young couples. And this weekend, uh, on Saturday and Sunday, actually on Friday and Saturday, I did a funeral service for an old man. And of course. As a monk, I observe and witness all kinds of emotions. Remember, we talked about emotion last time. Emotion different from feeling, from thinking. Remember that. And yeah, when people in the wedding ceremony, wedding party, and so forth, what what are their emotion? Joy. Joy. Happy. And how about in the funeral service? Sad. Depressed. See, and especially. If they miss their father or their parent, uh, fathers uh, a lot, it's it's be hurtful. Many years ago, when we were slave men, um, I went to stay in the temple in LA, and <clears throat> at that time, I went out with the monks uh, to um, do the funeral service for. Um, a young boy, I think only 16 or 17 years old. Somehow, um, they got to the car and they crossed the railroad track and they crashed. It looked terrible, peacefully. And uh, the sister of one of the boys, <clears throat> when we did the ceremony, when we finished up to, when we finished the, um, the ceremony and we put his body into the furnace. So somehow she's so emotional. She needs to jump inside that uh, furnace because of her attachment to her brother. Of course, this is not easy to depart from, from their relatives, but that is what we call personal identity, ourselves and others, ourselves and our relatives. It's not easy, right? So, how can mindfulness help shyness? Shyness is 
Do you need two identity or two right? Um, well, if you're really shy, um, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you could you could use mindfulness just to begin by listening to the person that you're talking to, and then that will help you have a conversation. Just being mindful on that moment and that conversation instead of worrying about what they're thinking of you or if you're afraid or all those other thoughts. You can just focus on that person and that conversation at that moment. Just each word that is said. Then you'll be less focused on how shy you are because you'll be focusing on what they're saying to you. Mm, or, or sometimes uh, we have what we call stage fright, right? A mm -hmm. uh, puppet um, phobia. When you talk in front of people, you shy, you frighten, you shake it. Right? So this kind of mindfulness could help. And this is really uh, good articles here. Mm -hmm. So basically, can you repeat again how could you deal with this kind of um, attachment to personal identity? Um, well, you have to remember that everything is temporal. That's the point. Everything's changing. You can't mm -hmm. do it. Like my example earlier is, I was my identity is partially attached to my motherhood, and when my kids are getting ready to turn 18, I felt very shaken because that whole paradigm is changing. Because now my children are adults, so that's a completely different type of mother-child relationship. Mm -hmm. So the attachment to my identity being grounded in my motherhood was causing me suffering. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just noticing that they're just they're individuals and I'm an individual. Mm -hmm. They have their own life and I have my own life and that it's always going to be changing. Yeah. Kind of makes me feel better just knowing that that's normal for everyone and that nothing ever stays the same. Right? Yeah. That in itself helps a lot. Yeah. Uh, in the in the views of being a mother who has all authorities to control the children, mm -hmm. right? And now your problem need to shift that you're friends with them. Mm -hmm. The only thing you can do is to give them advice. Only if they want it to. Yeah. <laughs> only if they listen to. Yeah. Right? Otherwise forget that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes if you take this for personal, right? Mm -hmm. If they don't listen, what happened? Yeah. If they if they don't listen like when they were young, right? You'll be frustrated. Because you attach to that kind of personal identity, right? This happened. Uh, it happened to us. Happened to our children, right? So that's why, we, if we ask, we ask, we have been mindful with things are changing, things are changing, things are changing. movement by movement. So that's why, when even when this new shine is, because we attach, we are concerned about our personality. Mm. So we we reject the idea, or we could not have that kind of confidence in ourselves. That's why we shy, right? Um, okay. Um, and let me go down to the list here. So in in mindfulness, is help us instead of criticize ourselves. We weak. Um, we don't have enough knowledge to present things to the public or to present to the, the groups. But instead of having that kind of self criticism, we accept that who we are. We recognize who we are with that kind of peacefulness, without any kind of judgment, right? With that, with that kind of uh, elaboration. Uh, our analysis of ourselves, and that's why we have that type of self awareness of self compassion. We recognize, understand ourselves, and we be more compassionate toward ourselves. And after that, we could spread that kind of compassion to other people. And this, the, the last stage of this article, is talk about here. Here, as my mindfulness is non judging. You can be accepting of yourself rather than self-critical. Uh, mindfulness is movement to movement here and now awareness. You can actually be here rather than some in some emerging future you feel anxious about. So when you stand in front of the class, in front of people, if you compare, oh, I'm not good, like by him or her so far, you'll be frightened. But say, okay, I can do it, I can talk in a natural way. And I remember when I was young in high school, the teacher said, when we when you stand in front of the class, 
Chứ lúc đó, the only student lay a chair and table, that's okay. We keep up ourselves more confident. We don't have much uh, from uh, interest about other people looking at us and so forth. But of course, when we get older, the more we mature, the more it's for us to approach or to, to know how to deal with people much easier, right? Uh, so uh, mindfulness is turning toward and being with. So we can stop avoiding a thought, avoiding the feeling and so forth. The compassionate and open, open heart awareness and so forth. Not to have any kind of condemn, um, condemnations about ourselves and others. So, so that's, that's how we deal with that kind of personal uh, identity. Uh, we accept that's the way we are without being bad judgment. Okay, so the next one, number four, yes. Uh, we talk about mindfulness and talent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please. Um, well, the articles I read focused a lot on like, um, we don't, if we know what our talents are, we may not think that they're important, or we may not realize their full potential, and just kind of let them be. Um, but a lot of it was like, talk, not just about like recreational talents, but like your, your talents in the workplace, like your skills that you bring to your job. Um, and uh, one of them was saying that you know, mindfulness is just be active, actively noticing things and being aware of it. And um, But a lot of times, we self-label our talents and that limits ourselves. So, like uh, one of the biggest labels in our culture is what job we have. So, you know, uh, whatever position you have in your job is a label, and it can restrict what you can and can't do. So that restricts the growth of your talent. Like whatever you know, place that you're working in, whatever skill you bring to that. You know, if you're not the boss or whatever, you you may be restricted by what. Um, you're able to do and your talent can't grow. Um, but it, it's saying that just being aware of what your talents are is the first step in just accepting that I'm going to let it grow as it is. I'm not going to be restricted by labels. Um, and then the other article is saying that we have to master those talents and not just let them sit. Like we have to, we need to know what they are and be confident in them and let them grow and not be just okay with being, you know, mediocre. Um, and this will help in the workplace by, it'll help you become a good leader who's able to create an environment with focus and meaning. And um, in the end, that will reduce mindlessness in the workplace and, you know, in your recreational life, and it'll help you be more productive in some sense. Yeah. And you just tell a story. Um, this young man in Saint Louis, um, when he, was high, when he was in high school, he got the full scholarship to go to, I think, Washington University, or University of Washington, San Luis. It's one of the famous, one of the most famous medical schools in the state. So, but uh, when he went there for the first, I mean, that during his freshman year, he failed for most of the, the classes. And, of course, he's so depressed and frustrated. And of course, his mom asked me how could I give him some, some kind of encouragement, and motivations. And so I asked him, uh, "What do you like? What do you want for your life?" So he said, "Well, I like to be engineer, but my parents forced me to be doctor." So I said, "Why don't you go with your?" major instead of um, for your parents' wishes. But they appear my parents, but that, that's why I talk to them. I talk to his parents. So he's letting go to choose him to choose his own career. Otherwise even he pleased you but he doing his career. He could not develop his talent. Yeah so um, after that day I read to let him go to uh, the engineer school um, and, and but later on he changed his career. Now he, he's working on his um, teacher license. He just passed um, that license is he's, he's do good in that type of major. So again you need to recognize your talent. 
Of course, you may need to listen to other people advice, right? But you have to recognize yourself. Otherwise, you you don't know yourself. As much as you recognize your talent, you may develop that in my way. You have that more confidence. As a lot of students, especially freshman year, right? They may not know what career, what major they want to take. But later on, if they have a kind of mindfulness, some type of um, understanding about their own talent, they would develop that. That's why many, many, whenever I see the young people, I will ask them, what do you like to do for your life? They, from that time on, they would recognize the major or, or the career they want to pursue. So again, mindfulness is uh, yeah, now, especially for the young people, if they know how to apply, this is so much. So when this show, um, here, um, especially in the leadership, right, let me say, being a leader, you need to know your expertise. We could not take care of everything, right? Uh, some of us have the skill in speech, in, uh, in talking. With some of us a handyman, a handy lady, right? We have different skills. So we need to know how to develop our skill. Mm. And some of us, like uh, you have the skill of being mother, being father, being teacher. But other people may not, right? So we need to develop that kind of skill. We need to mind what, what kind of talent we have. So that's why you know, the Fortune 500 companies, they build the mindfulness to leadership development, to help the leaders to recognize their skill, to recognize their talent, to deal with um, or to lead um, uh, the other people. You are one of the leaders, right? In him, Imena, can you share? Oh, OK. <laughs> I'm not, um... IT professional, so I'm a team lead of software engineers both in the States and in India. So Is it hard for you or you enjoy it? Um, I enjoy it. It's challenging. There's a lot of stress because we have a lot of like, deadlines and I have to coordinate and design solutions, IT solutions, and then delegate those solutions to engineers and then they code them and then I have to test and make sure it's okay and we have to do it in a certain time frame and then we have to move them from then we've got development testing to production environments. When in the middle, we have to get the business group we're designing it for to approve it and sign off on it. And so it requires a lot of patience. I'm the coordinator between the business and our team, and it requires a lot of patience. And just managing the expectations of the business team and keeping the IT team motivated and busy and making sure they always have work and that things are getting done in the right order. And then there's a whole bunch of like levels of bureaucracy, a lot, and that's probably the hardest. Politics too. So much politics, yeah. <laughs> okay. It's just a lot of that Everywhere. stuff. Everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. So next week we talk about mindfulness and leadership skill too. <laughs> yeah. And we talk more. Yeah. So, uh, in uh, in order to lead other people, we need to recognize our talent. We need to recognize our uh, expertise. If you don't know yourself, there's no way for you to lead other people. Right. So most of you, right, most of you are leaders, mm -hmm. right? Um, you work somewhere, somewhere else, or you you have, or you elite someone else? Uh, well, I have my own business, technically. Oh, really? Um, Good. Um, How many employees do you have? It's just me. I've got cosmetics. OK. So um, I have to work together, though, with other women and tell them as well. We get together and have ideas and share ideas. Um, sometimes I'm the leader when I have a big party at my house and show off the products and stuff. And then sometimes I go help someone else at their party and I don't get to be the boss. So it's not really a power struggle, but every now and then, like, you want to be the boss, but you can't. And sometimes you're not feeling it, but you have to. So. Yeah, if you're a leader and if you're not mindful of what you say, one of your order, right? People follow. Is that right? If you provide the appropriate order, they would finish the job soon. Uh, it's not um, uh, uh, better. But if you give the wrong order, you screw up everything. <laughs> uh, so, so we talk about that um, on this Wednesday again. Okay, okay so, uh, um, so 
That's why we need to recognize our talent. We need to recognize our expertise. Okay, that's number three. Number four. Oh, sorry. So number five, please. Number five is what? Uh, yes, human capital. So, oh, yes, you. Okay. What, is, what are human capitals? Human capitals. Um, those include skills, knowledge, experience, and personal qualities. Mm -hmm. On the homework, it says it can also like include roles, performance, learning, and teaching. And um, I have six steps to personal discovery and development, and then there are also, I read an article that included things you can do to implement, implement mindfulness, like at work and while you're performing a skill or a role of some kind. And this is the part that I think is most interesting, so I'll show you this. Things that you can do are really important, like remembering to breathe, which about a lot. Take three breaths before we respond to someone. This I think is really important because I know I am I can be a reactionary person. So if somebody asks me something, I want to be able to answer them right away um, because I'm impatient. Actually, I want to take care of everything at once. So I don't stop to breathe sometimes, and that's really important. Um, also, you need task versus multitask. Do one thing at a time, or at least try to. Pay attention to and appreciate others. Remember that a lot of other people need to do their jobs well in order to for you to do your job well. And I think this is something a lot of people forget is to value other people and the work that they do. And that can keep you grounded while you're performing a task. Um, and the mistakes people make on the job that contradict mindfulness, forget to listen to one another, make assumptions, project into the future and not plan meaningfully. An example, um, like thought processes of like, what if this happens, then that will happen, and, this, and it kind of snowballs, and then this creates anxiety, which can also cause mistakes. So if you're somebody who really worries about making mistakes, then it's actually more efficient to be mindful than to worry about what if this happens, because those that planning isn't actually planning for anything. It's just getting you off task from what you really need to do to get that. That's better for um, human capital. Um, let's see. I have advice for beginners, and I, I have other information. Okay. So how you do? How you be mindful with your own, let's say, experience, experience of writing, whichever skill you have, whichever experience you have, how could you be mindful? How could you develop that kind of experience in a mindful way? Well, for me, and based on what I've read, I think that when you're performing a task and you need to be mindful, then it just requires a pause um, for you to focus on exactly what you're doing in that moment and what it requires. And, um, and like I said, doing one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. and focusing on the importance of what you're doing and whether or not it aligns with your values because oftentimes people take on jobs and they don't, um, like for example, the, well, the example that you gave, if you don't really want to be a doctor, <coughs> then you're not going to put forth as much effort as you need to. If you really want to do engineering, then that's where your true talents are going to Blossom. So, being aware of that. Okay. So, anyway, yeah. this, let me show you one more time about the list of the skills. Mm. That, um, the skill strength, basic skill can read, write, listen, and speak. Thinking skill do you make careful, well informed decision? Do you know how to learn? Of course. That's the thinking. Personal qualities, are you honest, hardworking, respectful, self-motivated, can you be trusted? Uh, resources, do you use most, your most 
in Han resource, like in the class, most of the resource I pop I, I upload on the canvas, right? It's useful for you. Are you sometimes you need to uh, do more research, do more search about the um, the question that you write in outside my resource, my resource. Most of the time I do, do you rely upon my resource. Most of the time. Most of the time. Okay. It's sufficient for you right, to write. Okay. And then interpersonal skill, how do you interact with other people? Mm -hmm. uh, team players, that's very important. Um, when you are leaders, you have to work as, as the teams. Um, system, do you know how your family is a school and your class work? You know how our class works. So that's a skill. Um, so um, talking about uh, personal quality, let's for example, can we be chose? Of course, if we keep up with our dignity, right? We say something and we, we live with that world. And we have to be mindful what we say. We have to be mindful what we promise. Is that right? Sometimes, this happened to me too, sometimes because so many things that I could not remember. So sometimes I promised to this person, that person. So now I forget. Unintentionally, until they remind me, it's happened because I, it's, uh, I don't write the north. I don't pick. I don't. Unless it's important, appointments I would write. Otherwise, it's a substitute, and then I try my best to remember. But sometimes I miss here and there. There's, there's as much as we not we don't have an intention to tell lies. We keep up that promise that we keep up our identity. Okay, so. Um, that's number five. So that's human resource, human capital. We have the skill, right? Knowledge. We talk about self knowledge, right? Mm. And um, experience. <clears throat> um, and um, personal qualities. That's including the skill too. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Um, okay. Uh, how much does affect quality of lives? Please. Now. Um, uh, the, the main thing, it says uh, uh, mindfulness can affect your uh, like cortisol levels, which is the main uh, hormone that causes stress. And for some reason, it just decreases it in the afternoon. It, 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 the paper I read didn't really say why. But it also helps. Uh, Increase life enjoyment and helps cope with illness. Um, uh, quality of life has to do with like improved vitality. You'll, you'll have less body pain, greater social functioning, decreased anxiety and depression. And it, it defined it defined quality of life as the individual's perception of their position in life in the context of the culture and value systems in which they live. And uh, in relation to their goals, expect, expectations, standards, and concerns. And what I got from the last part of that was, uh, like, if you're, like you said earlier, if you're working towards something you're passionate about or something you love, you'll be happier. Um, and uh, it will help control your uh, mood and behavior and stabilize your emotions throughout the day, which uh, would also help you get to sleep better. Night. Apparently, if you're if you're more if you're more stable throughout the day, you'll have a better night's sleep. That's what it said as well. Um, yeah, less cognitive and physiological activation before bed. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much everything. So basically, what type of quality of life that you might envision? Like, what do I envision when someone says about the quality of life? In every aspect of life, right? Yeah. Your wealth, yeah. your relationship, your education, your occupation, and so forth. Yeah, it's just, I mean, the word or the phrase itself is pretty well defined. Your quality of your entire life, like every aspect. Okay, so let's say. Um, how, how could you apply mindfulness in 
let's say, in the quality of your relationship. The quality of what? Of your relationship. Oh, with, with relationship. your girlfriends or whoever. Uh, just be mindful of pretty much everything within the relationship, like what they're doing, what you're doing. If you do anything that annoys them or vice versa, communicate. Your emotions to yeah, next week we talk about marital relationship in my in my goodness and and uh, all kind of relationship. Okay, thank you. So is this so important right to do the last one, right? Yes. Maybe the last one for the personal how my goodness affect your personal inspir aspiration, like loving kindness, compassion, and so forth. Okay, yeah, so I guess the first um, reading or article I read um, was just kind of talking about aspiration and what it is, and they um, didn't necessarily, they said they didn't really want to associate um, aspiration with an, an intent. Um, it's more of, I guess, an idea and a, um, I'm trying to think exactly how to explain this. Um, an attitude um, to possibly maybe like discover discover something. Um, in this particular added, particular article, the man was talking about um, the attitude to I guess discover kind of what life is all about. Um, so that being said, um, how it kind of connects to mindfulness. Well, you know, as we grow older, we kind of develop our own opinions and are more, I would say, closed-minded. I mean, that's, I guess it's not like all the way true, but I would say that a child, since they don't have, they have kind of more, more of a learning mentality, um, just because they don't think they know it all, um, for the most part. So that's why I think how being, being mindful can help you kind of reverse to that. Um, by trying to just clear your mind and be accepting of anything that comes your way and not really try to judge it and put it in a certain type of category. Um, so, uh, compassion was, like I'm going to set up here, compassion, it was made up of kind of like three concepts of uh, mindfulness, um, let's see. kindness, um, yeah, kindness was in there, and um, kind of a idea for, I guess, the greater good of all humanity. Um, so I already talked about kind of mindfulness. I would say kindness is kind of in the same way as I talked about um, being mindful, because I, I think like with your personal relationships, if you kind of observe and pay really specific attention to that person, you can kind of offer more kindness to them. If you learn like what exactly they like and what they dislike, you can kind of just become more on their level and connect uh, better with them. Um, also, as far as maybe the uh, focusing on the greater good of humanity, I think, again, if you view the world as people as kind of all being connected in a part of one unit, um, you're more likely to be able to try to maybe fix something. If somebody, if one, you know, if one certain part of um, this one big unit is hurting, you can try to help that part. Um, and again, be mindful how that you can pay, if you pay more attention to the people around you, even maybe people that you don't know well, you just kind of maybe pay attention to their emotions and facial expressions. Um, you can definitely um, better serve their needs. So, thank you. That's great. Um, let me take us one or two minutes. Like magnify. What's the difference between our inspiration, value, and goal? Last time we talked about value and goal, right? They're different, right? So where is aspiration going to? Um, I mean, so 
I would say a goal is trying to attain something yeah. or aspiration. I don't especially completely get it, but I guess it's maybe trying to attain something without maybe having the disappointment if you don't obtain it. Kind of. I mean, because you still have an intention. Aspiration is still about intention, but um, it's not really goal oriented. And I forget exactly how we define values, so I don't know how to differentiate that. Remember when we talk about ICT, the difference between uh, the value and the goal? Mm -hmm. If we set the goal, what happens? Yes, this point with expectation, right? Which is the goal. If we could not reach, we this the point, right? Value. The value of being a professor, being a doctor, and so forth. Right? Aspiration, I think, aspiration to work to that value. And I think aspirations don't have a limit. Like you never really will reach those because if you want to be more compassionate or more understanding, you can always be more of that. So yeah. you always be more like, positive. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's yeah. not like an end cap for it. Yeah, that's great. Okay. All right, thank you. Let's um, always, uh, again, um, this one, this uh, note is so important that you can read this at home. I put it on, on this um, uh, the canvas so it's mindful. Uh, this talk about a compassion, how to be mindful, how to um, work together uh, with the uh, I mean, how my friends go together with the compassion, how to think of the kind of compassion and so forth. So let's just move on to the next topic for our Wednesday. Yeah, we talk about leadership. Now, I change a little bit. Can you have the list? This. Okay, I change a little bit. Let us. Um, This uh, I need three people to pick up the first three questions first. Number one. Okay. Yeah. Number one. Number two, please. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. We threw the down, sorry. <laughs> okay. 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 Jamaica. Okay. Number three. Yeah. Okay, now talking about four, five, six, and set four, five, six, seven, eight. You you don't need to pick up now. You choose by yourself because you use the model. You use a mindfulness approach. MBSR, MBCT, ACT, PPQ, as them. About one of them. You're free to choose. Right? You're free to choose now. But that's all. You can be have more. Flexibility, right? To choose the model that you like to work with. For example, uh, develop. Um, we talk more. Let's say enhance decision making, innovation, vision, more production, and so forth. Right? We have plenty of. We have flexibility of um, of work on. Um, so. Okay. Right, thank you. So see you on Wednesday. Thank you.